Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I am going to give you guys a full review of the System76 Thelio Major Desktop. I can't wait to dive in. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this review is because the desktop that I'll be talking about is actually mine. I decided to purchase a brand new computer for use here in the studio. So this is not a review unit. It's actually my desktop and it's awesome. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. Now, to be fair, I've been wanting to get this video out the door for quite a while now. I think about two to three weeks ago, I did an unboxing video that didn't turn out all that great because unboxing videos are a lot harder than they look, believe me, at least they are for me. But you know what? Better late than never. I'm going to give you guys a full review in this video and I think it's going to be worth the wait. Now, before we get into it, a quick disclaimer. System76 did not sponsor this video at all whatsoever. And just like all the reviews on my channel, I retain full creative control of all of my content. So all of the comments and thoughts and opinions I'm going to share with you guys in this video are all my own. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and review the Thelio Major. So first of all, I do need to talk about the packaging. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, but I did want to mention a few things because I think the packaging is really cool on System76 computers and this Thelio Major was no exception. Now, like I mentioned, I did an unboxing video of this machine. And even though that video didn't turn out very well, it was fairly clumsy. The box was absolutely huge. And that made it a bit hard for me to position the camera with my shorter tripod, so that was part of the reason. But overall, the packaging is really nice, it's colorful, and it stands out from other manufacturers. The box even has Welcome to Thelio written in a bunch of languages, including Klingon. They seem to have really thought this through. Once out of the package, it's a very awesome looking desktop. On one side, you have a wood grain look, and on the other, it's more... I guess, space age. The wood grain almost reminds me of the Atari 2600 from back in the day. And I swear the fact that I'm wearing an Atari t-shirt today is a coincidence, honest. And there's all kinds of cool details, such as symbols on the fan vents and the Denver mountains being symbolized on the left side of the machine. The fan vent on the back even has planets in it. And my understanding is that they're supposed to be in the order they were in at the beginning of the Unix epoch. They've literally thought of everything. And for me personally, they even engraved the logo for this channel on the front, which is awesome. But full disclaimer, they did that as a cool surprise for me. There's no actual option when you order a Thelio desktop to have custom engraving done. And currently it's not a service that they actually offer, but it was a very awesome surprise nonetheless. And no other desktop looks like this. It's in a universe of its own. A lot of passion and hard work was put into its design. When it comes to ports, there's quite a few here. I counted eight USB ports, an ethernet port, audio jacks for stereo or surround speakers, USB-C, and the video card that was equipped in my model has one HDMI port and several display ports. One thing that I thought was a bit confusing was that the audio jacks aren't labeled, and they're not color coded either. So finding out which one to plug my speakers into was a bit of a challenge for me. I literally had to try a few of the jacks until I found the right one. So I would have liked to see some sort of solution here, such as a label or a color or something. But then again, it's a desktop, so I'm very unlikely to unplug and replug the speakers unless I buy a new set. Now, several people on Twitter, as well as here on YouTube, have commented that they don't particularly like the lack of a USB port or two on the front of the case, and that reaching behind the tower to plug in something like a flash drive is a bit annoying. In fact, a Patreon supporter reached out to me right after I did the unboxing video to let me know that it would be impossible for him to reach the back of the case considering that he has cerebral palsy. And you know what? I totally get it. Having to reach behind the case to plug in something like a flash drive, especially when the tower is as large as this one is, 
that's something that's going to be very tedious for a lot of people, and actually myself included. Now, there's a bit of a challenge here because you could argue that if they did put USB ports on the front of the case, it would detract from the design. And I think the USB ports on the front, if they did exist, would stand out like a sore thumb. But then again, the folks at System76, they are very clever people. And if anyone was able to figure out a way to have USB ports on the front of the case and not have it stand out, I'm sure they could handle it. Now, there are a few workarounds you could consider for this particular problem. And in my case, I'm actually using both of these workarounds. First of all, if you're going to purchase a desktop, such as a Thelio, you're probably pretty serious about desktop computer use, and I would argue that you probably have a mechanical keyboard. A lot of mechanical keyboards out there nowadays have a USB hub right there on the keyboard. So if that's the case and you have a keyboard like that, then you have access to a USB port that's even closer to you than it would be if they put one on the front of the case. As for me, both of the mechanical keyboards that I switch between, I'm actually somewhat of a keyboard hopper. I'm sure you've heard of a distro hopper. I'm a keyboard hopper. Both of mine have a USB hub right there on the keyboard, so I'm covered. But also, in addition to that, I decided to purchase a USB hub, actually two USB hubs, that clamp right onto the desk itself. And here they are on the screen right now. And depending on how far away the edge of the desk is from you, this may or may not be a convenient way to solve this problem, but it works for me. So I have quite a few USB ports right there at my disposal, and I don't have to reach behind the case anymore to plug something in. Now, let's get back to the design of the desktop. The awesome design of the Thelio doesn't stop with just the exterior. That's only just the beginning. I also decided to take the top cover off in order to show you guys the interior as well. And they seem to have thought of everything there as well. They have a custom fan controller inside, and they even went as far as to customize the entire chassis, right down to the fan section where they direct the airflow through a very specific path. There's room for multiple GPUs and extra hard drives as well. For the fans, they used fans from Be Quiet because controlling noise is actually a very important aspect of their design. And unfortunately, I actually had a big problem with noise. Now, if you look behind me, there's a server rack in the background and you're not hearing the noise from that server rack because, well, I have filters in my audio that helps prevent that kind of thing. But this desktop was actually louder than my server rack, which was actually shocking to me. It was quite baffling to me why the desktop, even when basically idle, would be the loudest thing in the studio. And I looked deeper into it, and what I found was that there were two problems that were creating the extra noise that I was experiencing. The first thing is the eco button on the power supply. I actually talked to Carl directly, and what I learned is that the eco mode on the power supply actually enables a very silent fan curve and if you don't have that on, then it's going to be a bit louder. And the thing is, before they ship these out, they actually set that to be enabled by toggling that on with the switch on the power supply. But then again, it's just a switch. So perhaps at some point during shipment, it hit a nice bump or something like that, and it just got flipped the other way. I don't know. But that took care of about 50% of the noise as soon as I did that. Now, the other problem is that there's actually a motherboard fan, and it's not the you know CPU fan or case fan or anything like that. There's actually a small fan right there by the ports on the motherboard, and that fan was extremely loud and was probably the majority of the problem that I was facing. Now, what I found was that in the BIOS, you could set the fan mode for that fan to silent, and once I did that, along with the eco mode on the power supply, it fixed all of my noise problems, and the Thelio became the most silent thing in my office, which was pretty cool. But I did let System76 know about that fan. The models that they had there in the warehouse didn't actually have that fan on them. So at some point, maybe the upstream vendor added that fan. I'm not really sure. But you know what? There's a happy ending because now that they're aware of it, they are going to be putting out a firmware update that is going to set that to be silent by default. So if you were to buy a Thelio, then that's one less problem that you might have to deal with. In fact, for me, that was the only other problem that I actually had. 
Now let's talk about the performance of this desktop. My unit was purchased with an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3960X, which has 24 cores and 48 threads. Also, I ordered it with 64 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte SSD that's using PCIe generation four storage. For the GPU, I went with a modest NVIDIA GTX 3070, and yeah, I could have actually ordered a more powerful GPU, but I don't play a lot of games on my desktop, so that really wasn't a priority for me. I just wanted something that was good enough, so that's what I went with. And I know a lot of you that are watching this video, you're going to the comments right now to ask me, why did I go with an NVIDIA GPU and not a Radeon GPU? Now the thing is, I do prefer non-NVIDIA GPUs whenever possible. But this rig is being used for video rendering and there's some benefits in that regard when it comes to NVIDIA, it is what it is, so that's why I decided to go with an NVIDIA GPU this time around. But don't get me wrong, if I was purchasing a desktop for any other purpose, I would definitely order it with a Radeon GPU, no question. All in all, the performance is great. Some of the 4K videos that I've rendered have finished in less than eight minutes. Of course, depending on length. In fact, all of the videos that I've uploaded in the last three weeks or so were rendered right here on this desktop. Now, I'm sure if I enable GPU rendering, my render times would be a lot faster. But Caden Live, my video editor of choice, it doesn't consider GPU rendering stable just yet, but it'll get there eventually. And when it does, I think the RTX 3070 will be more than up to the task. Now, I did play some games on this machine and they run flawlessly for me. I had no slowdown at all. But recording gameplay footage from this particular tower, it just didn't seem to be something that would really work out well for the video. And the reason for that is because I use an ultra wide display and that's not the normal resolution of a YouTube video. So I would have had to lower the resolution to record gameplay footage, but that wouldn't be an accurate depiction of how I game normally because I usually use the ultra wide resolutions. I don't like to see the black bars on the left and the right side of my display if I can help it. And not only that, gaming is not really my primary use case for this machine anyway. That being said, the games I have tried have all run at the max settings with no issues at all. So if you are buying one of these desktops to play a lot of games, then I don't see any possibility of you having an issue here. The hardware is more than powerful enough. Overall, I'm very happy with my purchase. I don't regret it a bit. This desktop has been fantastic so far, and I really enjoy using it. Now, to be fair, a lot of you guys out there would probably be better served with the base model Thelio, which is a lot cheaper. I feel like this machine is more for those of you that need something serious when you are doing creative or professional work, and this desktop is a great fit for that. But the base model Thelio, as well as the Mira, if I'm pronouncing that right, the second model in the tier, I feel like both of those would be plenty good enough for most of you. But I'm really happy with my purchase. I enjoy it quite a bit and it's already improved my render time. So I feel like it was definitely worth the purchase. What do you guys think about the Thelio desktop? Let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to hearing what you have to say and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.